Welcome back to Stephen King Reviews Movies. I'm Stephen King and I'm reviewing a movie by Stephen King. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be reviewing the new Netflix movie, In the Tall Grass. And it's obviously uh, based off of the novella, or short story, or whatever, by Stephen King and Joe Hill. And it released fairly recently, so I did want to get a review for it very, very quickly so that you guys could see my thoughts before you see it. Oh, in case you haven't seen it yet and are wondering whether or not it's good. I apologize for the noise in the background. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, but other than that, let me get right into the review. Oh, I will be reviewing both the movie and the book in a way. I will be comparing the two. So if you have not read the book, don't worry, you will not be spoiled. But this review will be based on how it connects to the book and how it differs from the book. To begin, I do think that the movie itself was not as good as the book. I think the book was a lot better than the movie for a lot of reasons. The main one being the amount of diverging plot lines and stuff that are going on. Now, the movie itself is obviously a lot longer than a short story would be. The short story was extremely short. It's really, really small. It's like 50 pages. Actually, I, I don't know how long it is. It's very, very short though. And the problem is that a movie needs to have a lot more content than a short story can offer. And so, of course, they do need to pad it with a lot of stuff. That is a bad idea, and they did not just simply pad it. Instead, they went ahead and they took liberties with what they thought the lore was about, and they went ahead and put a lot into the story that was not there previously. And this is kind of where the big problems rise from. In itself, the lore that is created through the movie is not bad, but compared to the lore that was initially in the book, it's kinda bad. It seems like they're trying to draw from the book's lore, for about 15 to 20 minutes of the movie, maybe 30 minutes of the movie. And then suddenly they realize, huh, a movie is more than 30 minutes. And so they pump in, pump in, pump in all kinds of new lore, fancy stuff, time, timey-wimey, magic, weird, funky things. And you just pump it up full of completely new lore that was not really foreshadowed at the start of the movie. And in general, it feels like it just, it, it doesn't fit because the, the story itself becomes very, very confusing. In the book, there's a very clear idea of who the main characters are, what they're doing, and what the conflict is. That's very obvious. Now, if you've read the book and then you go into the movie, you'll see that the entirety of the movie is played out within 30 minutes. Now, the reason that this gets confusing is because that is what we think the plot is even in the movie. However, by the end of the 30 minutes, it feels neandering because of how we know this is literally how basically Basically, it, this should be where the conflict begins, but the conflict is pushed off right up to the very end. But this should be where the conflict begins, at the 30 minute mark. However, we introduce a lot of new plot elements, and now this main plot element is really, really strong and pulled far more than it is capable of being pulled, because it's not a crazy big story. It was made a short story for a reason, and these characters are not important enough for us to care about for something that is essentially the size of a novel. This is not a short movie. It's an hour and 40 minutes, and although that is generally a short movie, it's not a short film or anything. It's an actual full-sized movie. And for me, the amount of content that was in the movie justified it, but it justified it in a bad way because there was so much that was pumped into it and a lot of it was badly done. And that is the issue of why it's so big. Now, I'm not just saying that the book is better than the movie because the book was written first and the movie's based on that, however, it diverges. That's not what I'm saying at all. There are a lot of merits that the movie has that the book simply cannot hold a candle to. The characters are much better in the movie. I did say that the characters are not strong enough to hold this massive plot, and that's still true. However, in the movie, it is much better done. We have a, a visual sense of what the characters are like instead of exposition. We have a lot more natural storytelling and we actually understand who the characters are from a very, very genuine perspective. This makes me like the characters a lot more. It makes me really resonate with them despite in the book how they're, it, it's kind of explained really badly, but in the movie, of course, that's much better. Despite this, there was a lot of detail that was pulled out of the book, small things that uh, one of those, for example, which is not a big spoiler, it's that she sings a couple poems, okay? There's a girl that sings a couple of poems, and the, the small detail is that she got these poems when she was in university, or high school, or something. But the thing is, that detail was just simply removed, and to me, it just felt like you're, you're adding a lot of stuff to the movie. Of course you are, you have to. But you shouldn't be removing all these small things from the book because that is what built up the character. So that is the main gripe that I do have with the movie. It seems like the characters are, are a little bit too thin to carry this entire plot. And of course, the main, main issue for me, the biggest one, is how the plot goes in very weird directions that are completely unexpected and unexpected in a bad way. 
What works so well about Stephen King's book is that the plot itself is very small. There's a very small problem, a conflict that occurs, and once we go into it, there's a deeper aspect of it, but that's not very well explained. Now, that could be considered a bad thing. I consider it a bad thing, but the fact that it was pushed off to the side and didn't really matter too, too much, we understood the gist of it, that was something that was good. However, in the movie, it was played into. We really pushed in towards that really ominous thing that just we didn't understand at all. And so because of that, in the movie, once we make more questions, we have more unanswered questions, we begin to fall off the boat. We don't understand what's going on even more in the movie. That is to say that the conflict is, although it, it is bigger, it's much bigger and grander, that like it should be, of course, because it's a movie, it is bigger and grander. However, the ending, the, the resolution to all these conflicts is not as satisfying. Even though in the book, there wasn't really a resolution. But the, the problem with that is that in the book, it was a very small conflict to begin with. The resolution didn't really matter because the conflict was so good and we had an ending to it. But in the movie, there needed to be some kind of a resolution. And uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but there needed to be some kind of a resol resolution and it, it worked out, okay? It worked out to an easy degree, but it was nowhere near the level that was expected. From a film of this caliber with so much plot going on, there was not nearly enough. So I understand that this does get a little bit confusing, but so let me summarize it really quickly. The plot itself goes in many more directions in the movie. Now, in the book, it's a very small amount of directions, and because of that, the ending really finishes it off okay. It finishes it off in a satisfactory way. In the movie, because there are so many plot lines, because it's so big, I feel like it gets confusing with all the plot lines running each over each other. Many of them are so make me feel like it wasn't resolved, and it, it feels like so many questions were created from this new, larger lore that were never answered. And so because of that, I really feel like the movie suffered a lot from these people trying to expand on the book, and that just simply didn't work. I'll just quickly say that all the cinematography, lots of stuff like that, very, very small things like the dialogue, I enjoyed it in the tall grass. It wasn't something great, it wasn't something crazy, but it was good. Although the cinematography, there was a lot of editing choices that I thought were absolutely brilliant. Um, and there were a lot that I thought were absolutely dumb because they were trying to go for something symbolic, something really beautiful looking, but it ended up having absolutely no meaning. And so that's kind of where it stopped me because it seemed like it could have been a lot cooler if there was meaning behind it, but there ended up being no meaning behind it. And that's kind of what stopped me there. So all things considered, I don't know whether I want to give it a three star or a four star, but simply Simply because of the convoluted plot lines, I am going to bump it down to a three star, which means it's okay. I don't mind it. It's it's solid. It's fine. I don't mind it, but it's a little bit too wonky for my taste. So three out of five stars. That's what I'll give it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this movie review. I do think it's a lot worse than the book because the book itself is wonderful. I absolutely loved it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to watch the review of the book, please go into my channel and look down a little bit or look in the description. It's linked there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me anything you want to know about the movie, about the book. Tell me what your thoughts are, anything like that, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.